Hi everyone, it's the Camino team and we're here with another extremely cool video for you. Today we are introducing the RTX 3080 video card from Gigabyte. This model replaced the RTX 2080 and is currently one of the fastest GPUs in the world. Its price varies depending on the version. The MSRP, according to open sources for a reference GPU with 10 gigabytes of video memory, is $699. But there are practically no GPUs available in stock, and if they can be found, they go with a significant overstatement to the manufacturer's suggested retail price. Now, let's take a closer look at the GPU. The card in our review is made in a non-reference design. The visible part of the cooling system is made in the form of a plastic casing with an illuminated Gigabyte logo and is equipped with three 80mm and 90mm fans with the ability to completely stop when the GPU is in the standing time and start when the GPU chip temperature exceeds the threshold of 56 degrees Celsius. The fans rotate in opposite directions to reduce the turbulence and also remove heat from the radiator more efficiently. The GPU the GPU is quite large and occupies two and a half slots in height. The output part of the card contains the following ports, two HDMI 2.1s and three 1.4 display ports. The reverse side of the GPU is reinforced with an aluminium backplate with a corporate logo in which there is a cutout for airflow through the card from the third fan. A massive radiator made of aluminium plates and seven heat pipes is installed under the casing with fans. At the point of GPU chip contact, a copper base soldered on heat pipes is used. To cool the memory, a part of the copper base is used through the thermal spaces adjacent to the chips. Let's move on to inspecting the printed circuit board. The printed circuit board has its own design which differs from the reference cards used by NVIDIA itself. The board is manufactured by automation, thereby reducing the number of substandard production. On the board we can see the Ampere GA102 chip made by NVIDIA, produced using an 8 nanometer technical process. Due to this, the GPU chip has a reduced chip area and its performance has increased as more of CUDA cores are accommodated. Near the GPU are 10 GB of memory consisting of 10 GDDR6X chips manufactured by Micron, operating at 1188 MHz with a total bandwidth of 19,000 megabit per second. The card is powered according to the following scheme. 16 phases are allocated to the GPU and one phase is allocated to the memory. For additional power supply of the GPU, a 2x8 pin mini fit connector is used, which is connected via two additional flat connectors to the board. Thus, the card can consume more than 300 watts at peak load. On the 20XX series, recall that the additional power supply was on the board itself without an adapter. The wiring was on the board itself. There is a BIOS switch on the card which allows to work in OS and silent mode. The first mode permits the fans to work at full strength. The second mode limits the operation of the fans. Test Stand Hardware Intel Core i9-9900K Asus WS-Z390 Pro Plus G-Skill 16GB DDR4-3600CL16 1TB NVMe SSD OS Windows 10 2004 NVIDIA GeForce 456.38 DCH driver Additional software MSI Afterburner 4.6.2 GPU Z 2.34.0 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme 3D Mark Port Royal Games Fortnite RT Mining software Claymore 15 Let's move on to the GPU tests. For gaming tests we chose Fortnite with ray tracing support. The graphic settings are set to maximum. 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme and 3D Mark Port Royal were used as a benchmark for gaming performance. Game Tests During the Fortnite RT game in 4K mode, FPS stayed at 130-150. That makes it possible to play comfortably even if you have a 4K monitor with a refresh rate of 144Hz. The gameplay was pretty comfortable. The 2080 Ti GPU showed 95 AVG FPS, which is 52% lower than the 3080. 
The 2080 showed 47 AVG FPS, which is 70% lower than the 3080. In the 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme benchmark, the card scored 8,595 GPU points, which is a great result. In 3D Mark Port Royal, the result was 10,708 points. The 2080 Ti GPU showed 7,500, which is 15% less than the 3080. The 2080 showed 5,300, which is 62% less than the 380. We summarized all the results in a table. Gigabyte RTX 3080 Gaming OC Fortnite RT AVG FPS 147 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme 8,595 3D Mark Port Royal 10,708 NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti FE Fortnite RT AVG FPS 95 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme 7,500 3D Mark Port Royal 9,700 NVIDIA RTX 2080 FE Fortnite RT AVG FPS 47 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme 5,300 3D Mark Port Royal 6,600 Let's move on to the GPU mining tests. For these, we used Ethereum algorithms. When mining Ethereum, the result was 87 mega hash per second. After overclocking, the result increased to around 96, 97 mega hash per second. This overclocking will for sure be more stable only on liquid cooling. Recall that mining Ethereum on 20XX series cards was seriously weaker due to the fact that the 3080 is faster memory. The GPU power consumption is within 340 watts during mining. In gaming tests, it consumes about 300 watts. When overclocked, the card currently consumes up to 350 watts on liquid cooling, but it may be possible to overclock even higher with other software and drivers in the future. The maximum power supply limit is 380 watts. We estimate maximum peak power at 400 watts. In the 2080 Ti, the power consumption was up to 300 watts at maximum overclocking. During mining, we measured the back of the GPU with a thermal imager. To do this, we had to remove the back plate. The GPU zone warmed up to 59.6 degrees Celsius and the memories irregularly heated up to 74.3 degrees Celsius. The VRM zone warmed up to 73 degrees Celsius and 71.6 degrees Celsius. In conclusion, we wanted to share our general feelings about the GPU. The card left a positive impression, both in the design of the board itself and in the cooling system and in its performance. The Gigabyte RTX 3080 Gaming OC is suitable for those who are used to cranking everything to the maximum, even in 4K resolution. I would like to note that even under load, the card works almost silently. But for installation, you will need a fairly spacious case and also a rather powerful power supply unit since the card's consumption has increased up to 30% higher than the previous 20XX series. A compact SFF computer can only be assembled with liquid cooling. For example, the Otto platform is fully compatible with the new 30XX series of cards. As far as mining is concerned, everything is not so definite. The 3080 performs very well in ETH mining and is one and a half times ahead of the previous generation of GPUs. But other algorithms are not optimized to work yet. Subscribe to our channel, comment and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Thank you all.